You're probably thinking, oh man, a stack of boxes? Is Hippio just flexing on us again? Well, howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and I did gymnastics in third grade, so I'm pretty flexible. Speaking of flexible, we're gonna be talking about a keyboard that's really cool that you can't buy yet. The Nova 65. Wait, 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 don't leave. We'll talk about that later. So Odin Gaming reached out and they wanted to sponsor a stream. So they did. They sponsored a stream and I took a look at their Nova 65. However, they didn't sponsor a video. They're a new player on the scene and they wanted me to check out their new keyboards. At first glance at the price, which we'll talk about more later, I was like, okay, these are spicy. This could be a good offering. But is it spicy? Will it be a good offering? We'll get into that right after you get into the subscribe button. Thank you so much. The unboxing experience is quite pleasant. They've got a heck ton of foam and a decently cool space aesthetic. The board comes packaged with a switch and keycap puller and a USB-C cable, which is pretty good. And let's just set the board to the side so we don't mess with it. Oh, hefty. I wouldn't have any issues about this thing being protected during shipping. The switch puller is also great to see as it's one of the few good ones. Most switch pullers that come with keyboards, they suck. They're the worst. Speaking of suck and the worst, not this cable. Wait, why did it just become black? Oh, yeah, that's because there was two colors of this thing, and they sent me both. Neat. That wasn't hippio magic, that was just a coincidence. So, let's, uh, let me fess up. You know how I said that you can't get this keyboard anymore? Yeah, that's because it already went on group buy and sold out relatively quick. But, you know how I said I'd tell you other information? Well, I've got the exclusive scoop that it'll be available again quarter one of 2022. That's in a couple months, that's not long. And I'll mention a couple issues in this video, and apparently they're fixing all those in the round two. So that one's gonna be a way better one to join in on. Anyways, this little spice monster came in at 160 US dollars for the Bare Bones DIY kit. It's aluminium with a polycarbonate bottom plate, hot swap with south facing LEDs, and get this, Duroc V2 stabilizers pre-included. Look at these guys, these are the stabilizers I normally shill for because they're so decent. Yeah, pre-installed. Pre but they're also, they're like, I think they were kind of lubed, but we'll check on that later. But all of that for $160, that kind of piques my interest. That's why I was like, yeah, I'll check out this thing. Oh, you're paying me too? Okay, yeah, nice. No, please keep paying me. I, I moved and I need to pay rent. But this aluminum plate is a tiny bit boring to me. So I'm gonna want to take it apart and swap it out for something special. Thankfully, wait, oh my gosh, that RGB. Uh, thankfully, they sold polycarbonate plates separately, and I'll be checking that out soon. But I can't help checking out this RGB. This board is one of the brighter boards I've ever seen, and the RGB was quite spectacular, except for one RGB LED on the Z key that arrived broken. I'll kind of chalk this up to being a review unit, but yeah. It also features RGB underglow, but this is red. Yeah. But all of this chalks up to very pretty stuff. But honestly, you can't really see the underglow, so it's a little bit useless. I wish they would have cut little side slots. That would have been real nice. Sorry for the bad audio, but I'm going to take back the previous claim of saying that they were lubed and say that these are definitely unlubed. So I'll be deploying the lazy hippio method of lubing stabilizers later in this video, but I'll be doing it off screen, so don't worry. If you want to see how I did it, then check out the stream in the top right, and you can go through the whole VOD with some extra problems thrown in. Anyways, disassembly of this board is very easy, but also time consuming because these back screws are so long. But I just use my wow stick. Wow. And taking the top plate off reveals that the gaskets are installed in the top plate. Oh sorry, did I go like four minutes without mentioning that this is a gasket mount? Yeah, because it is. It's not going to be the craziest gasket mount you've ever seen, but it uses pour-on gaskets, which is pretty cool. Similar to a hippie at a rave, it absorbs a lot of vibrations and prevents the board from feeling too stiff. Don't think about that last part too hard, though. We'll put these a little bit to the test, but essentially, they're there. They reduce vibrations. Doesn't give you a very squishy typing experience, though. This is what I like to call the, like, air quotes gasket mount, where, like, sure, there's gaskets. Sure, it's not going to make your board, like, super pingy, but eh. It's kind of there as a buzzword, similar to the GMMK Pro. But we've arrived at our first issue. This board doesn't use a daughter board, so the USB was connected to the PCB. This causes a little bit of issues, but they've resolved this in the second version. So if you're looking at this for the round two, then don't worry about that. That's not a problem anymore. Speaking of not a problem, uh, they've, hmm, I, I can't really think of a segue for that one. But they've got foam in between the plate and PCB, which is pretty nice, and we'll look at that later. They've also got these standoffs in, and I personally recommend removing these, as it's just going to make your typing experience quite a bit, like, 
hot spottier. However, if you're super new to keyboards, it makes installing switches a lot harder. So in that case, I kind of don't recommend it. But because I'm installing the polycarbonate plate, I'm going to want those gone, which is also going to make installing switches harder. But you know what? It's fair. Oh yeah, and here's the foam in between the plate and PCB. It improves sound. It's good. Now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, Hippio, there's a ghost on your screen. No, it's the polycarbonate plate. It's not a ghost. It's just, it's sitting there. It's chilling. It's vibing. Now, you can't build a keyboard without switches, and in this case, I've got the SP Star Marble Soda OGs. That was a mouthful. Hold on, let me drink some marble soda. Nice. Um, I forgot to record installing them, so yeah, I installed them. Make sure if you're following along at home, put some pressure on the hot swap socket from the back as you install these, otherwise you might have a bad time. But look at that gasket performance, that's very nice. Also, if you want these switches, link in the description, use code HIPPIO to save 5%. But are they any good? Ugh. They've got a light factory lube, and I was expecting them to be decent enough factory lubed, but I was not too happy with their performance, and you'll see that in the final sound test. There's a little bit of ping, and that's mostly chalked up to the switches, not the case. But I was also sent some keycaps with this build, so I'm gonna check these out and put these to the test. Now, Odin Gaming sells these for $50, and they are die sub PVT. And honestly, these were surprising. They've got a black on white and a white on black, and these are the white on black. This is a pretty rock solid cherry profile set, except the fact that their layout support is absolute dog trash. If you're getting this keycap set for anything other than this keyboard, you're kind of out of luck. Okay, it would support 10 keyless and full size, but basically nothing else. Anyways, there you go, the keycaps are on. I personally went for the white on black on white aesthetic because I thought that looked pretty cool. But you can let me know in the comments whether or not you think this was a good build. So now you're probably asking, Hippio, what are your thoughts on this keyboard? Well, honestly, for $160, this thing has blown me away, and a couple people have done way cooler things with it than me. Like, it's not the best keyboard ever, but I like it a bit more than something like the NK65, which left me feeling like it was a bit boring. Now, if you're watching this video in 2022, first off, howdy hey, does it get better yet? Uh, second off, you can check the description for an affiliate link to this and use code HIPPIO to save 5% on any of the extras. But yeah, my overall thoughts are, this board is pretty decent, and with the improvements, like the separated daughter board that they're going to be making for the round 2, definitely something to keep your eye out for. I like the unique blocker. I like the little seam that goes down the whole board. Honestly, that's probably a lot of people might not like that, but I kind of like it. And the sound is decent. Not incredible, but keep in mind that the switches are pretty bad. Speaking Bruh. of sound, if you like artists like Joji, Eden, Post Malone, whatever, then I've made music and I think you'll actually like it. Check it out Bruh. in the description. Anyways, I'll be leaving you with a sound test. Make sure you watch that whole thing to support my YouTube algorithm overlords. Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want some fun stuff, and hit that join button if you want exclusive behind-the-scenes content like these people. Thank you!